Hello and welcome to a new video and in this video we're going to be doing a helicopter controller because after the last video on the plane controller a lot of people asked me for the helicopter controller. One, one person asked me but it, it's super quick to do so I figured why not. So just as, before I get into it as a quick uh, primer on the difference between a helicopter controller and a plane controller I've got a little prop to help me. So those of you who've seen the plane controller will know that the way the plane lifts itself is essentially you get enough forward momentum the air goes under the plane wings and it pushes it upwards. And then when you're in the air, the faster you go, the more upwards force you get. You can pitch to get more upwards force, you can tilt, you can roll, etc. Helicopters are slightly different. I don't have a helicopter Lego model to help me here, so you have to bear with me. Helicopters just have upward thrust. They don't lift by going forwards, they just push straight up relative to themselves. So you've got the big propeller on the top, goes straight up, pulls it up like that, and then the way they move around is they tilt. So that upward force going that way is now going that way like at a slight angle which pulls it upwards but also forwards and then obviously you tilt that way it goes towards tilt this way it goes away etc that's all we need to do we just need to do that upward force and then we need to tilt our helicopter in the direction we want to go the little blade at the back we're not going to do in this video because we don't need it that blade is essentially to counteract the rotation of the blade on top. So if without that one at the back, the helicopter would start spinning around. We don't need that because we're just using the physics to move the helicopter around. We're not simulating every single particle of air that it's going to be interacting with. So the helicopter isn't going to start spinning itself. We would have to put that force on the helicopter as well as the force that we're imparting to make it move. Let's go. So as you can see, we're starting off with more or less a blank project. We've got a plane and we've got a helicopter. That's it. The helicopter is from the Uni Asset Store. It is a free model. I will put a link in the description. So the first thing we're going to do is head up to our input manager. And we want to just rename these to horizontal and vertical to horizontal wants to be roll. Vertical wants to be pitch. And then we're just going to copy one of those. There we go. Just saves us having to put all the values in again. So we're going to call this one YAR and the negative button is going to be Q and the positive button is going to be E. And we don't need alternatives and we'll leave all the other variables the same. Back into Unity and if we find our helicopter, we want to add a rigid body and we want to add a box collider. Obviously with a proper model, you, you wouldn't want to, with a proper game, sorry, you wouldn't want to use a box collider, but we're just getting things going here. I'll leave the details to you in your own project. So the box collider, I'm just going to have roughly covering the mass of the helicopter. It doesn't need to be perfect. We'll say until you set things up properly, you need to have enough collider on the ground to stop it from just tipping over because that will happen. So I'm going to go with that for now. It doesn't need to be perfect. Regarding the mass, a little bit of research suggests that an average helicopter, a small helicopter would be about 360 kilograms. So I'm going to set the mass to 360 units. And then we're going to create a helicopter script. I'm just going to drop that onto the helicopter and then we're going to open it up. So the first thing we need is a rigid body. And then we want a few variables. I'm going to serialize field these and make them private because we don't need to access them from outside other than in the inspector. The first one's going to be called responsiveness. And by default, I'm going to set this to 500. This is a value that I came to in testing, one that felt about right. Obviously, you play with these and make them feel the way you want it to feel. Throttle amount is going to equal 25 by default. Again, this is a value that felt decent when I was testing. And this is the amount that the throttle will increase and decrease when you increase or decrease the throttle. And then finally, well, not finally, but finally for this little section, we have the throttle itself. And this is just going to be a value between 0 and 100 that represents the percentage of actual thrust that we're getting. And then we want some variables to start our input from the player's button presses or mouse movements, however you decide to control it, joysticks, etc. So first one's going to be roll, and these are going to correspond directly to the keys that we just set in the input manager. Next one's going to be called pitch, and the last one is going to be called yaw. So onto our awake function. The other thing we need to do in here for now is get a reference to our rigid body component. And then in our update, all we're going to do to start with is just do handle update, which is a function we haven't created yet. So let's go create that one to get rid of that error. Private void handle inputs. And then in here, our first three things we're going to do is get the inputs from the player. So that's role equals input dot get axis role. And then we're just going to do the same for the uh, other three values, pitch and jar. We see these are case sensitive and I did capitalize them in the input manager. So make sure you put those correctly. And also this is been typed wrong. <laughs> 
handle input, not handle update. So the first thing we want to do is handle how much thrust we're currently getting from our engine, which is, we're, I'm going to use the spacebar key for this, and I'm just going to use get key because we're not doing an input manager lesson here, we're just doing how to make a helicopter fly. So key code dot space, if you wanted to, you could remap the jump button, which is currently spacebar by default. And then we're going to say throttle plus equals time dot delta time times throttle amount. That's just going to add, depending on how much throttle amount we have, it's going to add some throttle. And then we're going to say else if input dot get key key code dot left shift. And essentially we're doing the opposite. Now, now we're removing throttle. So this time it's minus equals. And then the last thing we're going to do in this function, it's a very simple function, is clamp those values between not and 100. Because remember, the throttle is a percentage of the maximum amount of thrust that our helicopter can achieve. And that's it for handle inputs. So our only function left now to get the helicopter actually up and flying is a fixed update. And in the fixed update, we're just going to say rigidbody.addforce transform.up. And the reason we're using transform.up is because, as I mentioned earlier in the video, the helicopter moves by essentially always having upward force relative to itself and then tilting. So that upward force then starts to lean forward a little bit and it starts to go forward. Um, so it's always transform.up rather than vector3.up because vector3 will always point upwards, whereas transform will point upwards relative to the helicopter. And that's going to be multiplied by throttle. And then we're just going to use force mode dot impulse. Now, if we just do a quick test of this, hopefully we should be able to make our helicopter fly upwards. There we go. So as the throttle starts to pick up, the helicopter moves off. And then to do the rotational values, we're just going to say rigidbody dot add torque this time. So this is same as add force, but this is applying rotational force rather than just straight force. And we want transform dot right times pitch times responsiveness. And we'll just copy those two more times because I'm lazy. And this one wants to be the forward axis. And we're multiplying this one by roll. And this one wants to be straight up. So this is rotating around the up axis. So it's moving left to right. And that's going to be rotated by yaw. So now we should be able to make our little helicopter move around. Of course, we can see it. So now we should be able to make our little helicopter twist and turn in the air walk out the door, you see someone that you know, and they ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. You may want to mess around with the responsiveness values. And he's off. So the last thing we're going to do is going to make the rotor blades well, rotate, essentially. And to do that, well, first off, we need a value to tell us how fast we're going to rotate them. So serialize field, private float, and this one's going to be rotor speed modifier. And it's modifier because it's not the actual speed value, it's how much we're modifying the speed value by. By default, I'm going to set this to 10. It kind of doesn't matter for this because at a certain point, you can't tell how fast the blades are spinning. This is a purely a visual thing. And once the blades get, and this, this is the same in real life, by the way, once the blades get over a certain speed, you can't really tell if they're spinning faster or slower. So I've set it to 10. You can mess around with this value, but I'm pretty sure like after a point, it doesn't matter. We want a reference to the transform itself, and that's going to be called, uh, sorry, private. That's going to be called rotors transform. And then to apply this, we're just going to go down to our update. This doesn't need to be in fixed update. Sorry if I haven't said this already, but this all wants to be in fixed update because it's physics and fixed update is basically for physics. So if I put this up here, weird things can happen because this doesn't update consistently. This has variable intervals between the updates, whereas this one, as the name suggests, is fixed. It always has the same amount of time between each update. And then in here, we're just going to say rotors transform dot rotate and it's going to be vector three dot up multiplied by throttle multiplied by rotor speed modifier and then if we go into our inspector and we drag the rotors obviously this re doing it this way relies on the rotors being a separate model to the helicopter if you have one rigid object then this won't work and we're just going to drag the rotors into there uh, oh and another thing is you may need to change the you may need to change this depending on how your model is set up so if you've had to rotate your model 90 degrees to get it facing the right way up it's going to change the direction that your rotors are spinning around and now if we press play we should be able to get a helicopter off the ground this time with spinning rotors
Hi, this is Editor Beaks, and the more eagle-eyed of you may have noticed that we have a little error down at the bottom here, and that is because I have somehow added the script to the helicopter twice, So, and I've only assigned the rotors to one of those scripts. The reason I'm mentioning this in editing is because apparently I forgot to say out loud that I'd removed this extra component when I recorded the video, but the more important fact is that this also means that we are applying our forces to the helicopter twice, which is also why I kept crashing earlier on, because the controls were very sensitive. So uh, just thought I'd point that out. Thank you. Bye bye. And one little thing I've just noticed. This should be minus. I'm uh, rolling the wrong way. When I press left, I'm rolling right, and that's not correct. Or vice versa. Okay, so I said I'd teach you how to uh, make a helicopter fly in Unity. I didn't say I'd teach you how to fly. Clearly you need someone else for that. But if you want to check out the plane video that I mentioned earlier on, you can also see how to get a quick and dirty camera system going, as well as rotor sounds, like engine sounds for the helicopter that tie into the helicopter's actual throttle, which would look like this. One other thing I just want to add that I completely forgot about is the amount of thrust that you can have. So right now we are multiplying one by throttle. That's fine, but I mean, it works, but it doesn't give us any variability on how powerful a helicopter can be. So to fix that, let's just add a value here. Serialize field, private float, let's call it max thrust. And that's going to equal, well, right now we're using one and that works. So let's say five and that should give us a well a five times bump in amount in the amount of power we have and then this is just going to be enclosed in brackets and it's going to be max thrust times throttle So that's it. Hopefully that video was useful and, and short and, and concise and to the point, but you know, I have a tendency to ramble like I'm doing now. So the last thing I do is to thank my amazing Patreons. You all have a special place in my heart, but the special, special, special thanks go to uh, Sugar Daddy slash Mama Tear Patreons, who are Dave Maldean, Reg Reed, Gabriel White, Aaron Clark, Mr. Drunken Dragon, Andrew Hansen, and Tim Arie. You may notice on the screen that uh, Discord Nitro Boosters are also getting a mention on the thank you section as well as anyone who wants to switch over to Kofi, anyone who subscribes on Twitch, because now I am a Twitch streamer as well, you will get some kind of thanks at the end of these videos. And that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed the video. And I'm going to go give my son his toy back.